Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 8. Now the things which we have spoken. Previous chapter, the high priest. This is the sum. We're going to sum it up. We have such a high priest. Subject, high priest. This is the guy that is in head of all the tabernacle service. The head of the, the Levite tribe that God has ordained to be the priest class. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesties in the heavens. That is no human high priest. Acts chapter 1 says that the one that is seated at the right hand of the Father is Jesus Christ. So the writer of Hebrews has brought the Old Testament to Jesus Christ. Right now there are chief priests in Jerusalem at the writing of this AD 64 thereabouts. Those men are not seated at the right hand of the Father. No, they're the ones that crucified Jesus Christ because of their envy, because of their sin. But the one who we've been talking about, chapter 7, verse 22, Jesus is seated at the right hand of Jehovah Father God no one has position there now seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesties of the heavens what would the Jew picture then he would picture that mercy seat and on that mercy seat would be God to the right of that mercy seat would be a cherubim not the high priest. High priest only went in there twice a year. He went in there, deposited the blood, and got out. Went back in there, deposited the blood, and got out. He didn't stick around. But the news has probably gone about that that veil has been rent. And Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of that mercy seat, offering now mercy and grace and salvation to all those that will believe on him. Something the man high priest could not do a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man and we're going to see it we're going to see a little bit later in this one God showed Moses the pattern the blueprints of that tabernacle that he built that pattern is to follow the pattern that is in heaven today when you look at the, 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 the layout of the tabernacle, it is the layout of heaven. The true tabernacle, the one that is in heaven, where this high priest is, not the earthly high priest. If this date's correct, like I said, I don't know the date. Just as better than what I, I can come up with. 64 AD, in six years, the tabernacle that they can look over and see is going to be destroyed by Titus. That's going to be destroyed. It is destroyed today. So you're not talking about the tabernacle from 70 AD to present. It's not there. But there's one above your, above your heads in the north. Which the Lord pitched and not man. Look at that. You're going to a place of a tabernacle. 
For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. All right? The people would come. Here's the goat. Here's a cow. Here's a heifer. Here is grain. Here is barley. Here is uh, wine. Here is oil. It's a sacrifice for my sins. It's a trespass offering. It's a free gift that I'm offering to God. The high priest would offer that up with his sons. Wherefore, it is of a necessary necessity that this man has somewhat also to offer. The high priest, verse 3, are those men that are walking around. They've been walking around that tabernacle for years and years. They took the people's gifts and they took their sacrifices and did according to the law. Now, Jesus Christ, that this man, Jesus Christ, had to have somewhat also to offer for man's sins. Jesus Christ had to have something to go into that veil and deposit on that mercy seat for people's sins. Not his sins, for our sins. So when you give a gift, you are giving it to Jesus Christ and he will present it. Now our sacrifice has already been presented by Jesus Christ himself. The Lamb of God which take away the sins of the world, the precious blood of God that cleanses us from all sins. That's the offering. That's the gift of, of Jesus Christ. The Romans 6.23, the second part of that, that verse says the gift is Jesus Christ. It's himself that he gives for us. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, and the law prescribed. That's Leviticus told you for this offering, for that offering. If he brings a turtle dove, if he brings a, a, a goat, if he brings, there, there was prescribed. He's not on the earth today. He's not going to be coming on the earth until he sits king of Israel. On David's throne, not a priest, a king, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. So the Old Testament is yet still future. It's still prophecy of things of what's going to happen. Things are going to come. As Mo Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, God. That thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. When Moses was on that mount with God. I don't know how God did it. I don't know if God put, brought Moses into heaven. Or if he did a PowerPoint. If he did a, a you know draw on the ground like Jesus did. I don't know how, how Moses was seen. But he said that pattern that you saw on the mount with me. You better obey and you better follow carefully everything that goes in that tabernacle. You're going to have those children of Israel build. The heavens are laid out like that. Inside the earth is hell. That's the brazen altar. The universe is spoken of as water. Astronauts. They go in spaceships. They got to wait for a space window. That universe is the is the water the brazen uh, uh, the uh, water where the priests wash then you go into a veil of the holy of holies where there's there's the candlestick where there's the table where there's the, the altar incense where man prays and then from there you go into the throne room of god the universe is laid out as a tabernacle But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry, God, Jesus Christ, by how much also he, Jesus, is the mediator. Paul told that to Timothy, 2 Timothy 2, 3 or 5. I believe how also he is the mediator of a better covenant, <coughs> which was established upon better promises. So as far as the Old Testament and the laws go, there's something better. And there's something much better in Jesus Christ for those Jews. 
For if that first covenant had been faultless, there should have no place have been sought for the second. Those Jews were sinners, wicked sinners. They, they despised that temple. They destroyed that temple. They cut the gold off the doors at times and gave it to the enemy to help them in battle. They closed that place up. They had, the, the Bible says in Jeremiah, they had uh, Roman Catholic churches all over the area with their images and their idolatry. I mean, churches, uh, altars. Sorry. They defiled. And because of their wicked sin, God said, you know what, I got, they need something else. Because they're not doing what I told them to do. For finding fault with them, the Jews, he says, behold, the day is come. Future. Saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. All right, all right, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, as a church, let's run to this book called Hebrews. The house of Israel with the house of Judah that explains who this book is written to. It's not written to the church age. It's not written to Gentiles. This is a Jewish book. And right now we are in a period called grace under the church age where you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. If you don't, you're going to go to hell. God gave those Jews a chance in the Old Testament to, to obey laws and regulations and, and animals and sacrifices and priests, and they disobeyed God. They are disobeying God today where God said, What must you do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The Jews are not doing that. Two times in history, the Jews have rebelled against God. God says, okay, I'm going to take the church away. I am going to beat you with a thing called Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble. That is a butt lashing upon the Hebrews who are God's people. But since you disobeyed God, I'm going to give you a whipping because you're my children. And I'm your father. And a father that loves his child will whip him. No, I love you. And I'm going to give you a new covenant. And that new covenant is going to be, I'm going to come and get you. And those that want to see Jesus Christ, I will take you, if it's Salem Peter, wherever they go, I will take you, I will give you the victory over Satan, not Rome. Even though Rome is Satan. But Satan himself. I will give you the victory over that. I will plant you in that land. I will be your king. You'll be able to plant a tomato seed, and by afternoon, you're going to have tomatoes. You're going to be able to lay down with all the animals and play with them. I am going to give you a Daniel. You'll be able to call the lions over and put yourself up against them and get yourself a lion matic mattress. And purr yourself to sleep. And you don't have to worry about them eating you. You're going to have snakes. And your children are going to be able to play with the snakes and not be able to die. Snake, the snakes will still be under the curse. Your children will grow old. And they will at that time play in the streets. Not now. You don't see any playing now. And I will be your God. You will be my people. I will be your king. I will reset up that, that temple. I will reset up the priests of Zadok. David will be prince. Ezekiel lays out all the, the work of the tabernacle. Satan will be bound for a thousand years. He will leave you alone. I will set up people that believe on the Messiah as their savior, as ruler of all the, all the, of all the people. The king of the kings will I be of those kings. You will see the twelve apostles of the land in the Lamb. And then after that, Satan's going to be loose. It will be the great white throne judgment. Heaven and earth shall, shall flee away. I will make a new earth. And there will I set my people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You will get that land grant. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you, Israel. 
I'll give it to you without the Arabians. I'll give it to you without the Syrians. Don't worry about the Philistines. Remember all those people I told you to take them and kill them and get them out of your land? I will remove them out of your land. You won't have to worry about them no more. That's the new covenant. And let's read more about this new covenant to the people. Don't you give up on Israel. They are God's people. He's angry with them right now, but man, he's got a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. The Catholic Church wants this promise. They want the land. They run around in Jerusalem and give all the people tours. And that's why I don't want to go to the Holy Land. The Holy Land has been vile with with. Catholics and been vile with Arabians and Ishmaelites and, and all other kinds of things and a bunch of Christians foolishly spending money. Well, I'm going to go to the Holy Land. I'm going to the Holy Land with Jesus Christ. When the curse is removed off this earth, I will be going to the Holy Land when it's green, beautiful, without a curse. I don't have to worry about the guys going to sit with me or across from me at, at the at the at the coffee place and have a bomb and pull the string while I'm sitting there. I don't have to worry about that with Jesus Christ. You'll be all casting in hell. But it's wonderful. Let's read the new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them out of the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. He promised them a land of milk and honey. But they had to fight to get into that land. They had to kill enemies. They had to overcome gods. Small G-O-D-S. Not in the millennium. And not in the new earth. That will be all removed. The day, I took, the day I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. Now look at that. God took me. He carried them by hand. He gave them no water. He gave them no food to see how they would react. And they acted wrong. They threw a fit. Like the other day, we, we went to the beach. And, and, and while my wife was down to, at the shore, there's this kid. A kid wanted to go start and go down to the sand. And his parents turned away. That's how Israel acted. He just grabbed that kid and pulled him away. And that's what God says about the Hebrew right now. And the Hebrew knows that. They pull their shoulder. Hey, they want to go. But there is a greater promise coming to Israel. Because they continued not in my covenant. They did wrong, not God. God's perfect in peace. God is perfect in mercy. Man sinned. And I regarded them not. Say, you know, couldn't do nothing with them. They would not allow me. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel, Hebrews, Israel, not church. After those days, oh, after those days, seven years, tribulation, saith the Lord, I will put my laws, that is not the church. How come you go through the book of Hebrews and you nitpick, but you forget about this one? Oh, let's go to Hebrews about this, about the church age. Oh, okay, what about put the law? Well, that's Jewish. Yeah, the whole book is Jewish. It says Hebrews. Okay? It's not like you, it looks like you're getting a bag of candy. You're taking your favorite candy and leaving the ones you don't like behind. You ever get one of those boxes of chocolates you open up it's like, yeah, those are the ones that people don't like. Yuck. The whole box of chocolates is for the Hebrews. I will put my laws in their mind. So the law is coming back. In the millennium, there's the law. Again. And write them in their hearts. There's the means of salvation. Today, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Well, God's going to take that Jew in the millennium, in eternity. I'm going to write it in their heart. Not on stones. Moses wrote them on stones. What did Moses do with those stones when he came down the mountain? You cotton-picking idiots worship. <coughs> Moses was the first one to break the entire law. There it was. Cracked. Broken. God said, I'm not going to write them on, on, a, on a stone no more. Some of them may break them. I will write them on your heart. 
and will be to them a God, capital G-O-D. Who knows what gods they're worshiping today? And what gods they worship in the Old Testament, Balaam, Asterisk, Baal. Look at all the gods that Solomon worshipped because of his wives. And they shall be to me a people. Write that down. Underline it. Highlight it. Whatever you do. Despite that they are rejecting God. Despite Jacob's trouble. There will be a time that the Jews will be God's people forever. I don't care what religion. I don't care what group you belong to. I don't care what society you say. There will be always Jews in the eternity. Blessed and loved by God the Father. Pray for them. Pray for anybody that goes witnessing to Jews. I have utmost spectacular for, for this person on Facebook. They went to the Holy Land not to go see the sites, but go witness to Jews. Praise God. You are in my prayers. And they're also witnessing the Muslims. Praise God. God is not finished with the Jews. If God was finished with the Jews, we would not have a book called Hebrew. Duh! People don't think. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor. Right, you got to read the whole verse. And every man his brother saying, Know the Lord. So in the millennium, there will be no street preachers say, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. There will be no one to say, hey, listen, come here. I got a gospel track. Let me tell you about Jesus. That will not be in the millennium. Matter of fact, the Old Testament, I forget which book it says, says that if you were to teach another God, that the family is going to kill you right then and there. You will not teach the Jews in the millennium about the Lord. Why? For all shall know me. That's the Jews. Remember we said the people of Israel? From the least, the, 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 the poorest, the little knownest, <laughs> that's the word, to the greatest. So even the millennium, you're going to have somebody that's going to be on the low of the ladder, and you're going to have somebody that's high in the ladder, and also looks like in the millennium that there's going to be poor and rich. Still, every Jew in the millennium will know the Lord. And guess what that Lord is? That L, capital L-O-R-D. That is Jehovah. There will be no Jehovah Witnesses in the millennium because they don't believe Jesus is God and God is Jesus. They can go take a flying leap into uh, with their back and, their, and getting their stomach landing into the lake of fire that burns forever. Let them do a belly flop in hell for not believing Jesus is God and God is Jesus. But I'll tell you one thing. Jehovah's people will believe Jesus is God. Then, right there. That's what it says. That's Jehovah. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Uh -oh. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. How? By the capital L-O-R-D. Just as much as the church age where our sins will never be remembered. As it's under the blood and after the judgment seat of Christ. So will the Jews. They're going to, there's going to be sin in the millennium. They're going to bring their offerings. The temple worship is there and bringing their offerings. There will be people that Jesus will tell, go jump in the lake. Because that lake that burns with, with, uh, with brimstone and fire is right there in, in the Dead Sea. But the curse is removed. In that he saith, God saith, a new covenant. He has made the first old. So why do we call the Old Testament the Old Testament? There you go. There it is. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. You know, the, this earth that is renewed during the millennium is going to have the curse removed off it. But that ain't going to stop Mother Earth from disappearing. 
Because at the end of the thousand years, when God comes, the earth is burnt up with fervent heat. Revelation 20 says, it flees. Here comes God as judge. See you later. I'm out of here, alligator. And in God, Revelation 21, down comes a new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem. New Jerusalem goes to those that are the Lamb's bride, the church. The new earth, that goes to Israel. What, what about the new heavens? That goes to Gentiles. That got Naaman in the Old Testament believed God to the best of his ability. He may be there and he gets to heavens. Nebuchadnezzar, I believe he got saved. However, a Gentile got saved. Because once he's once he enlightened us about God and who God was, boom, he's gone. You don't ever hear about him again. And isn't it interesting that when man looks at the stars today, he looks at those constellations, a lot of them are named for Gentiles. Orion, that's a Gentile. The hunter, that's a Gentile. And the rest of them. I don't think there's one constellation, as far as I know, that's named for a Jewish man. You don't see, you don't look at this guy, oh, there's Samson. Getting his hair cut, you know, I don't know. Man, European man, United States man, they're interested in going out of space. Well, listen, you you do what God tells you to do, and God will give man out of space. You just won't need a space shuttle or anything. So there's something better and greater for the nation of Israel. Utter, complete forgiveness. And their hearts clean by Jehovah God. Through Jesus Christ, your Messiah. Right now, the Jew does not believe Jesus Christ. He will go to hell. But them Jews that are waiting for the Messiah to come at the second advent. And do what they're supposed to do in the millennium. And those of David and Samuel and Solomon was given and promised by God that I am his father. I will chastise him for his sins, but I will no rise cast him out. Those Jews that did right in the Old Testament... You're going to be able to meet with them and talk with them on the new earth. Now, how's that for the Jew? 